Uh, but what about some of the other Aztecs, those that were drafted and those that were not? Uh, joining us right now, defensive coordinator for San Diego State, Zach Arnett, back on with the Cannons. Coach, how are you today? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, we are doing well and obviously a little perplexed about what happened to Cam Kelly. I mean, we thought he was a, a, a done deal, that he was going to – be drafted. Now, he did sign as a free agent with the Dallas Cowboys, but uh, did you get any feedback at all that would lend you to think that maybe there was a possibility Cam was not going to get drafted? You know, I personally didn't get any feedback uh, leading me to, to think that or suspect that. I, you know, I'm I'm not going to pretend to know all the inner workings of uh, putting together a draft board and all those GMs and coaches and people behind the scenes who do all that. Obviously we think very highly of Cam and the, the career he had here and the numbers he put up. And, you know, we think he's certainly capable of playing on Sundays and he's going to get that opportunity. You know, I don't, it doesn't matter whether you're drafted or not. You still got to go and perform and in, in training camp and, and preseason games and prove you can play at that level. So he's going to get the same opportunity that all the other guys get. And, you know, I'm sure it didn't go quite like he wanted it to, but that doesn't change the fact that, they're still going to lace him up and line up in training camp. And, you know, if, if he does what he's capable of doing, he'll make a roster. Coach, there are some that would say if you're not, you know, if you're you're going to go in the, the late rounds like six or seven, it's almost better not to hear your name called and be able to sign with a team of your choosing or one that calls you as a free agent. What, uh, what are some of the positive attributes Cam is going to bring to that Dallas defense? Well, you know, I think you're, you're seeing more and more of that the more length you can get at the at the defensive back position, you know, the the more it helps because these receivers are getting so tall nowadays. You know, you the Calvin Johnson, the world, I'm sure, you know, Des Bryant, I know he's not a cowboy anymore, but when you're getting these receivers who are 6'5 and 6'6 six, six and 225 pounds, you know, the it's 5'9, five, 5'10 five, cornerbacks, although they, they're still out there and you still see a whole bunch of playing, there are some serious mismatch and disadvantages that, you know, a shorter DB has against those guys. So length is, a, you know, it's a tremendous attribute that everyone's looking for in DBs from the NFL on down every level. So, you know, he's got the length. Uh, you know, he may not have ran as well in some of the 40s. I know uh, that was probably one of the reasons why people say he did have maybe a little bit of a, a slide. But, you know, there's football speed and there's track speed and, there are guys who maybe don't have the greatest track times or 40 or 100 meter times, but they play fast when it's, when it's football. So, and, and you see that on film. So, um, you know, and he's got some at both positions, corner and safety. So you can see him coming up and supporting the run. You see him playing multiple positions. Like I said, and you, you had mentioned it, you know, whether you're going to be a, a six or seventh round draft pick, or maybe, maybe it is better that you actually decide on your friends because then you get to decide what team you go with and you got, multiple multiple teams bidding for you. So I think it's going to work out in his favor. From what I understand, it went one more than five minutes after the draft had ended that he already knew where he was going. You know, the Cowboys were in talks with him to get him there as an undrafted free agent. And obviously, he and his agent want to be there because, you know, from my understanding, it went more than five minutes after the draft had ended that it was all pretty much a done deal. Talking with Aztecs defensive coordinator Zach Arnett, well, Coach, uh, obviously a year ago, it was Calvin Munson. I mean, what a story. I mean, when, when you have a guy like Calvin Munson, who's a free agent, and not only does he end up getting signed, but making a, an impact as a rookie free agent, uh, uh, as he did with the New York Giants, how, how much does that sort of help you with all these young guys that you're coaching? That A lot of them obviously have dreams of playing in the NFL, but how can you utilize a story like that of Calvin Munson? Well, you know, it certainly helps in the recruiting process. You, know, you, you can see that you can point right to a specific example, and and recruits can see, oh yeah, there's a San Diego State guy in the last couple of years, you know, playing in the NFL. Uh, and again, Calvin, there's an example of a guy who probably just like we were talking about with Cam, undrafted free agent, kind of gets to decide which team is the best fit for him. Sure enough, chooses the Giants, goes in there, and does what Calvin's always done, and that's just been a good football player and worked his butt off and makes the roster. And then you see him, <laughs> you know, you see him playing on Sunday. So, uh, you know, obviously the guys 
the guys who are on the team now, they all know Calvin and, and the kind of guy he was. But just like you said, you know, they turn on TV on Sunday and they can see him, the guy who was sitting in the meeting room, meeting room with him a year or two ago. There he is lined up for the Giants on Sunday. So they know the process about which, you know, what needs to be done. Coach, can you use that? Will you use that as, as a, a teaching tool with some of your younger guys? We know that the most important things are get good grades, play good football for the Aztecs while up on the Mesa. But you can also, would you use that and point to, hey, some of you that may have a doubt about your ability moving forward, you look at a guy like Calvin Munson, you look at some of the other guys who have signed as free agents, anybody can do it. Yeah, I, I certainly think so. The one thing I'll say about Calvin and, and most of the guys, I, you know, Rashad Penny, he's a first-round draft pick. All those guys, I think that was the – they don't worry about that stuff. Over there. They just worry about, hey, what can I do to be a good teammate and do my job as good as I can do it because there are, you know, 104 other guys counting on me to do that job and be the best teammate and the best player I can be in a standing state uniform. And all that other stuff after the fact, it'll work itself out. You know, in Calvin's case, he wasn't drafted, but there he goes. He makes a roster he's playing league. Rashad's case, well, he's a first-round pick. But I don't think either guy was worried on you know a day to day basis while they're at state. How do I get to the the league? You know what do I got to do to show that I'm an NFL football player? No, you just control the things that you can control. Your work ethic, how you go about doing the job every day there at state, and all that other stuff. You know, good things happen to good people. So I, I, it all works itself out in the end. I, I was going to say, coach. To me, football is, is is much different than basketball. We just we hear stories on the recruiting trail that you, you sit down with these basketball recruits. I'm not saying all, but and, and they want to know, well, you know, how do I get to the NBA? To me, it seems a little different in football. I mean, if you sit down with a recruit I and mean, you're sitting with his family, and they're saying, you know, our son's going to play in the NFL someday. How can you help him get there? Is that an immediate turnoff to you as a recruiter? How does that play out? You know, I, the, the the jump from high school football to NFL football, I'm sure basketball guys would say the same thing. That it, it, I mean, there's miles. It is a gigantic leap, and I'm sure that's true. But, you know, you could see some of those high school basketball seniors and it's a reason that Kobe Bryant's the world of Bronze can go straight from high school to the NBA and hang it. The, while the game is more physical, it is not leaps and bounds the same way football is, you know, at the line of scrimmage. You know, a high school senior, you just have no way of knowing that he can then go compete against 30-year-old men in the NFL and and handle the physicality of the game. So... The parents who think they know right now for a fact, you know, maybe there are a few out there. You know, my kid's going to be a, a NFL football player, and that's great. But for the vast majority of them, there is no way to know, you know. So every every parent thinks their kids are the greatest thing since rice and bread. And, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know, it's a it's a learning process. So, Coach, finally, you're out on the recruiting trail. You've seen the fledglings leave the nest to the NFL. Is the uh, the itch to get the season back uh, full time with you now? Oh yeah, I de- definitely. I mean, and recruiting is always fun because you know you haven't been on the road for a while, so you get to get out and see new faces, see new friends, and start to see the new new crop of recruits who guys are going to be recruiting and going after and add to your roster so it's an exciting time but then at the same time that means you're away from your players for a while and so you want to get back to them and and get back in the film room and on the practice field and obviously get get going for training camp and because it's a a big one week one Mm -hmm. and we're going to be missing guys like Christian Penny and Cam Kelly and all those guys you know Michael Holder David Wells all those Nick Bodden you know, these guys are going to be in NFL camps. We're going to be missing them. So got to get the, the rest of the roster performing like those guys did. Coach, always appreciate the time. Thanks for breaking it down for us today. We'll talk to you soon. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Aztec Defensive Coordinator Zach Arnett.